So Isaac Butterbrains is the king of 10 year olds. He has about 2 million subs on his YouTube channel. He recycles right wing arguments. He thinks he has his own insights. He's a comedian. He's just pretty funny to laugh at. He doesn't bring much insight to the table. He's also just a massive anti-vegan for no real justifiable reason, but just because it pleases his 10 year old fanboys. So Isaac and I have had a bit of back and forth. I sort of gave up on him because all he does is go, oh, you have a criminal history. Therefore, everything you say doesn't matter. So he's got really low grade, low ball sort of argumentation. He never really addresses any intellectual arguments further than appealing to hypocrisy by going, oh, you know what? Uh, you, you have a criminal history, blah, 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 blah. So Isaac Butterbrain's just an all round imbecile. So Butterbrains recently made a video on veganism, so I thought I might reignite the back and forth if he has the backbone to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me. But we all know he's a little bit of a coward, isn't he? So let's go. Let's watch it. And let's see what insightful magic this buffoon brings to the table. So here I was, sitting at home just the other night around 6pm. I just finished a fine meal, and what do I see come on the television? Picture Isaac sitting at home, scratching his bum, eating a bacon sandwich with ketchup all over his face, when he suddenly wets himself like a triggered man baby after seeing a pro-vegan advert. There was a hilarious ad that is nothing short of propaganda. And propaganda has been very popular throughout history. The Nazis used it, people have used it non-stop. So Butterbrains doesn't know the definition of propaganda, but if you want some really good examples of propaganda, here are some that the meat industry use. I normally play um, hockey with them because I get my spoon and I go boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Kids love beef mints and being high in iron, it loves them too. Two very long glasses of ice cold milk, please, mate. <gasps> milk, are you getting enough? The doctor says we should pork more often. Yeah. Pork fillets with less than half the fat of beef fillets and a valuable source of iron. Bit of pork, love. Oh, I love it. Shouldn't you get some pork on your fork? Beautiful day. Lamb. Doesn't get any better than this. But this is from the vegans. And it's the nastiest propaganda of all time. Allegedly, Joseph Goebbels runs the, the propaganda war machine for the vegans. Looks like Butterbrains learned a new word, propaganda. So let me get this straight. You're comparing vegans to Joseph Goebbels, the guy who tried to cover up extermination camps, consistently demonized and dehumanized Jewish people, the anti-Semite who literally used positive imagery to falsely portray concentration camps as nice places, is somehow comparable to activists who try to reveal the truth about these horrifying factory farms and slaughterhouses. I mean, I wouldn't expect much less from Butterbrains here, but this is probably the worst example he could have used. Like Joseph Goebbels actually fits perfectly in line with the strategy of the meat industry, who perpetuate species discrimination, they constantly try to cover up and propagate lies about their industry, calling it humane, and they use media to consistently try to deny the horrific treatment of animals, gaslight. Speaking of gas, the meat industry actually use gas chambers. So tell me again, who's more comparable to Nazi propagandists? And uh, he's doing a really good job because this is the that they come out with. Fruit and veg. Nice. Usually avoid this section, to be honest. Avoiding the fruit and veg section sounds like a typical man baby who cries to his mummy every time he doesn't want to eat his vegetables. Oh, she's walking her past yummy vegan burgers that will probably kill you. Obviously, vegan burgers won't kill you. In fact, in the swap meat randomized crossover trial, the study found the plant products improved several cardiovascular disease risk factors, including TMAO, and there were no adverse effects on risk factors from the plant products. Pork. Evil pork. Shortcut bacon. Pork mints. Pork chops. Also, just take note of how the pork products are displayed here. There's no accurate imagery on the packages to show how the animals are treated, chopped up into pieces. It's almost like they try to completely disconnect the shopper from the reality of these products. But vegans are the propagandists, right? Oh my God, where is she? It looks like Rolf Harris's and the Dalai Lama's dungeon. It's terrifying. There's lots of pigs. Pigs aren't, yeah, okay, yeah. That's pretty f***ed up. That's not great. I hope this is footage they found and they didn't recreate it. Um, you didn't, you didn't know, know. Did you? What about how he tried to say, I hope they, they found this and didn't recreate it. Like, do you really think Isaac gives a damn about seeing pigs in farrow and crates? Or is he just virtue signaling so he doesn't look like a complete scumbag in front of his audience? But if he actually does think this is messed up, then I wonder what he'd think of actual 
barrowing crate investigations that are about a thousand times worse than this. In fact, this is a much more sanitized version of what farrowing sheds are actually like. And yet he still thinks this is bad. I'm really surprised to see that on TV at six o'clock at night. Like a lot of kids are watching TV and I know it is probably necessary for people to understand what factory farming looks like because it's not okay. Why would it be a problem for kids to see where their food comes from, Isaac? Yeah, it's really shocking. It's nowhere near the reality of Australian pig farming like what you saw in that advertisement. It's nowhere close. And first you claim that activists were engaged in some type of Goebbels style propaganda campaign. And now you're saying it's probably necessary for us to understand what factory farming looks like. So how is showing the reality of factory farming propaganda. I think Isaac's only brain cell got confused. It is not good, but it happens to be the only way we can feed a population that is nutritious and beneficial for all. Well, factory farming is the only way to meet the demand for animal products. So of course, this kind of cruelty and suffering is inevitable, but it's not the only way we can feed a population a nutritionally adequate diet. Animal agriculture uses about 80% of the world's farmland, but only provides about 20% of the calories. Like it's so well known now that plant-based diets are nutritionally adequate and they're way more efficient than animal products. If you don't know that by now, I don't know what to tell you, mate. You can say that plants are there. Shut up, all right? You are incorrect. You cherry pick data, you cherry pick evidence, you've been lied to, you've learned that from memes. Shut up. Is he having a moment of projection there? Butterbrain seems to think that the only research on vegan diets being healthy are cherry picked memes. Yet there are many high quality studies that show the benefits of a plant based diet. Like the Adventist Health Study 2, which showed vegetarian, including vegan diets, are associated with lower all cause mortality. Or this study that showed vegan diets are associated with reduced risk of cardiovascular disease and ischemic heart disease. Or this meta analysis that showed a significant protective effect of a vegetarian vegan diet versus the incidence and or mortality from ischemic heart disease and incidence from total cancer, but I guess these studies are all cherry-picked memes in Isaac's world. The truth is there is a terrible disconnect between where your meat comes from and how it gets from, you know, the farm to your mouth. The irony of Isaac Butterbrain's talking about disconnect when he tried to accuse activists of Goebbels style propaganda for helping people make the connection. It's almost like he's a completely dishonest, biased fool who doesn't care about ethics or logic and only seeks to hang on for dear life to his crappy bacon sandwich with contradictory, illogical nonsense. We see meat as just something that's in the refrigerator at the shops. It's packaged up nice and we take it home and cook it and eat it, it's delicious. In reality, something had to die for you to enjoy that. Something had to die? Animals are not things. And no, they didn't have to die. They had to be enslaved, tortured, and murdered in order for you to eat their chopped up body parts. Or do you like using euphemisms to avoid the truth like a little propagandist? And I think what should be shown rather than this horrible account of what actually happens in factory farming, and there are some farming uh, people out there or farmers as they're more commonly known, who could probably let us know in the comment section that this isn't all farms. This is definitely not all farms. It does happen, it's not okay, but it's not all farms. See how painful it is to listen to him try to gather his thoughts? So it's not all farms, it's just the vast majority of pigs are factory farmed all across the world, Australia, Europe, UK, USA, and almost everywhere else in the world. And even if they're not all factory farmed, all animals in every farming situation will have their rights violated via gas chamber, bolt gun, or throat stabbing. I think it would be much more beneficial for particularly young people to see what hunting does and how beneficial hunting is to the environment. So first Isaac claims that factory farming is not okay and there's a terrible disconnect from where your meat comes from. And his solution to this is not to show people the reality of it, but instead show imagery of people hunting out in nature and how that's good for the environment. So Isaac's solution to the problem is to disconnect people even further from where their food comes from with his own little propaganda style campaign. Pain. Step aside, Goebbels. Butterbrains is here. But let's address it. One, hunting is murder. Two, how does he think that this murder is scalable for the entire population? He literally just said that factory farming animals is the only way we can supply the population meat. How has his memory lapsed in such a short amount of time? You could say the animal still has to die. And yes, it does still have to die. But if I was a deer, I'd much rather be shot through the heart with an arrow or a bullet at, you know, 10 years old than die of starvation at 12 years old when I'm too frail to look after myself. Does that not make complete sense? Dying of starvation would really suck. Yeah, it makes complete sense. If you're a dumbass and a murderer, that would literally be unjustifiable murder. Could you imagine going out and shooting human beings down, trying to prevent them from future suffering? I guess Butterbrains wouldn't mind if I shot him dead right now, considering he's probably gonna suffer and die of old age from all that animal flesh decomposing in his bowels. According to this study, the biggest cause of deer death is, wait for it, hunting. 
at 43%. Starvation only accounted for 9% of deer deaths. So it seems the best way to help deer is to stop shooting them. Imagine that. And the idea that hunters are out there like Mother Teresa trying to prevent future suffering and like that's their sole motivation for hunting is a complete joke. If that's the case, why aren't you out there in Ethiopia machine gunning down starving children to prevent their suffering? You know why? Because it's psychotic. I just cannot see a world where we do not eat meat. We've been eating it for the entire history of humankind. I can't see a world where humans don't mass murder other humans. I can't see a world where kids aren't being bombed in wars. I can't see a world where rapists don't rape. So I might as well just participate in all these injustices and say I can't see a world without those happening, so therefore it's fine to participate in it, yeah? I mean, Isaac's argument here, I can't see a world without said evil act, therefore I can participate in said evil act, would literally justify you doing anything. So good one, Isaac, mate. Which one of your brain cells come up with that one? The only one? Okay. It just, like there's so many arguments. You can talk about anemia, lack of B12, lack of protein, but it just sucks. Isaac accuses vegans of cherry picking memes, right, to get our information. And he's just said a bunch of words and provided no evidence for his claims. Well, Isaac, it turns out we can supplement B12 and if we get enough protein and iron and calcium from our diets, we'll be absolutely fine. Isn't that crazy? But isn't it also crazy that any poorly planned diet can be deficient in certain nutrients? But if we consume a well-balanced diet with supplements, we won't run into any deficiencies. That's mad, eh? Not to mention all the animals that and vegans kill when they grow their little crops, but anyway. And we all knew it was coming, didn't we? Crop deaths. Well, let's see what he produces. Let's talk about that. Because I'm sick of vegans talking about, oh, we, we save lives because we... Bull Okay, we can talk about bugs and all that type of and field mice and all that type of stuff that you run over with your big machines when you're getting your bread out. When it comes to protecting crops from insects, we have a right to protect our food resources. If we allowed insects to mow through our crops, it could cause a global disaster or mass starvation. It is not a rights violation to protect your property from insects who cannot be reasoned with, who would mow down an entire population's food source without thinking about it. We have to defend those crops, right? Justification. In regards to field mice, they are so unlikely to be run over by a harvester, it's laughable. Do you think field mice are so stupid that when they hear a harvester start up, they don't run out of the field? Are you serious, dude? In this study where they actually radio collared mice to test this out, it showed the process of harvesting has little direct effect on the mice. The mice were mostly killed by predation and it's unclear as to whether those mice would have been killed by predators anyway without the crop there. So do you have any comparative data to show that the mice definitely died because of the crop harvest and wouldn't have died from predators anyway? And if there are some mice that are run over by the machines, that's not a rights violation. That's literally an accident. This is similar to a road toll, and we accept a certain number of accidents, hit and runs from the traffic industry. We know that by participating in transport, people will die. We still do that because it's justified transport for civilization. We drive cars at high speeds knowing sooner or later that someone's going to die, and we don't categorize those accidents or incidents as murder or a rights violation. But I'm not sure if Butterbrains is aware of the amount of monocropping it takes to produce the grain that goes to chicken and pig feed for his diet when he sits there eating his bacon sandwich, scratching his ass, having a whinge. But what about this? This is hilarious. I'm sure this is gonna be the most logically watertight debunk of veganism to date. Well, not hilarious if you're a duck, but in the five years leading up to 2013, New South Wales rice farmers killed 200,000 native ducks to protect their field. So I want this to be very clear for people listening. Anytime someone talks about crop protection, like shooting animals to protect crops, it should be scrutinized very heavily because it's unclear as to whether this is genuine protection of property or whether it's just people exploiting hunting bans under the guise of crop protection. So in 1995, duck hunting was actually banned in New South Wales, but there was a convenient loophole. If a farmer allowed you on their land to protect their crops, as mentioned in this article, the ducks are being killed by amateur hunters, many of them driving up from Melbourne for weekend hunting trips who are focused on sport rather than protecting rice crops. Some of the ducks being killed don't even eat rice, said Miss Stacker. 65 pink-eared ducks had been shot, but they only ate plankton and insects. It's almost like they're not interested in protecting rice, and instead, they're just exploiting hunting ban loopholes for sport. Also, this 200,000 ducks killed number Isaac mentioned is a little hard to verify, but the latest numbers for the last five years is about 28,000 ducks killed in total, so that averages to about 5,700 a year. All right, you mathematicians out there, get your calculators out, because you're gonna need them for this next part. And butter brains, I think you should just tune out for this part, because it's gonna fly straight over your head. No pun intended. So let's assume the 5,700 ducks 
killed each year were all attributable to rice protection specifically. And if we look at the amount of rice produced in New South Wales in the year 2020 to 2021, it was around 400,000 tonnes. So if you take the 5,700 duck deaths and you divide it by the amount of calories in 400,000 tonnes dry weight of rice, which is about 1.4 trillion calories, you get this number here. That's how many duck deaths there are per calorie of New South Wales rice based on these figures. So for that to equal one equivalent duck death, you would need to eat roughly 245,700,000 calories or around 70,200 kilograms dry weight of rice. That's just for one duck death. For perspective, you compared it to eating like actual duck flesh. According to the USDA, a whole duck is around 2,445 calories. If you were to consume 245,700,000 calories of duck flesh, you would need to kill over 100,000 entire ducks. So yeah, I think eating rice is much better for animals than eating animals is. Crazy thought, right? And also, why didn't you ever hear Isaac harping on about kangaroos who were shot to protect grazing land of cattle in Australia? Or rats who are dog hunted on pig farms? It's almost like he doesn't care about hunting to protect the farms where he gets his flesh from. Do you know how many animals are killed to protect animal farms? But it's almost like he doesn't care about that because he's a biased asshole. Now, finally, if it really is genuine protection of your property, the human food supply, and not just undercover sport hunting, and all alternatives have been exhausted, then in most cases, that's probably not a rights violation because there are competing rights happening and certain crop protection measures are justifiable to prevent a global food catastrophe. There's a huge moral distinction between protecting property and enslaving animals to decapitate them and eat their flesh. More than 1,500 animals die each year to grow about 75 hectares of peas. Next time there's peas on your plate that you don't want to eat, think about how many animals had to die for that. Now we could just completely dismiss this claim on the grounds that the source is an anecdote from a pro-meat book salesman who just basically says, trust me, bro. Topping that, it's from a Daily Mail article whose sole motivation was to debunk veganism. So yeah, the most biased, nonsense, anecdote, trust me, bro source ever. We could just throw it in the bin and move on, but let's address it. So let's just assume this 1500 death stat is true of all peas in Australia. Let's just call it a pea yield on the lower end of about a ton of peas a hectare. Then a yield of 75 hectares would amount to about 60,750,000 calories of peas. And that would equate to about 0.0000247 deaths per calorie. So in order to be responsible for one animal death, you'd need to eat about 40,500 calories or 50 kilograms of peas. So let's put that into perspective in terms of chicken, the most eaten land animal on earth. So if we assume there's about 1,295 calories per whole bird, if you were to eat 40,500 calories of chicken flesh, that equates to around 31 chickens killed. And that's excluding all the crop deaths from the feed the chicken had to eat. And after all that, let's not forget that Isaac's source is Trust Me Bro from a Daily Mail article. At least 100 mice are killed per hectare per year to grow grain. That's a lot of grain that they have to kill and a lot of mice. So this claim is so old, outdated, has been thoroughly debunked. It's from a Mike Archer article in 2011 called Ordering the Vegetarian Meal. There's more animal blood on your hands. Everyone's had a go at this. It's ridiculous. So Mike Archer's estimates falsely assumed that mice plagues would affect all wheat fields in Australia every four years when they don't. So if you check out these two debunks, one from these stats and one from COG, once his numbers were properly adjusted for, the number of deaths dropped between one and 1.8 mouse deaths per 100 kilograms of wheat protein. Also, Archer used the out-of-date wheat yield number of 1.5 tonnes per hectare. But according to Australian Grain, in 2022, the average yields are about three tonnes of wheat per hectare. Now, get your calculators out. So Archer was basically comparing the amount of deaths in wheat protein compared to beef protein. And his claim was that more animals die for wheat protein than they do beef protein. But wheat is low in protein, beef is high in protein. A much fairer measurement is wheat calories. So taking all that into account, the new revised number of one to 1.8 deaths, to be responsible for between one and 1.8 deaths, you'd need to eat about 1,520 kilograms of wheat flour or 5 million calories. So in order to eat 5 million calories of beef, that's 200 kilograms of beef. Based on this data of deaths per million calories, 
that would account for around 145 deaths when you include deaths from harvest. So yeah, Mike Archer's claims are a bunch of nonsense. This 100 mice killed per hectare a year per year to grow grain is based on inflated mice plague numbers. And when people do a few adjustments, it drops the number right down. And when you compare it to eating cows, a lot more animals die and plus the cow has their rights violated. Mate, here's my whole point. What's more important? One cow per person per six months, maybe? Could we imagine Isaac making this argument? What's more important, the one human I enslaved and decapitated and ate lasted me three months? Or eating some wheat that kills some mice, incidentally? Like, you'd just think he's an insane murderer, wouldn't you? Imagine him using wheat as a justification for murder. That's what he's doing. But how can Isaac make a claim two seconds ago that 100 mice die per hectare of grain and then claim only one cow is killed per six months of calories. Doesn't Butterbrains understand that grass-fed cows are fed harvested grasses? They don't just eat grass off the ground. Haven't you ever seen the big hay bales and silage, forage, and all those crops that are harvested to feed to grass-fed cows? Also, he lives in Australia where beef cows are finished in feedlots with grain. Or wouldn't the crop death supply there, mate? Or a hundred mice for a slice of bread. A hundred mice for one slice of bread? Listen to this dude. Literally, Archer claimed it was 100 mice per hectare to begin with. We already told you that's nonsense because mouse plagues don't affect everywhere in Australia at once. But let's go back to this data for deaths per million calories. So if we assumed 1.6 deaths per million calories of grain and there's 80 calories in one slice of bread, that would be approximately this number of deaths for every slice of bread. Based on this, to cause 100 mice deaths, you would need to consume about 757,500 slices of bread or around 42,018 slice loaves. So yeah, that's a little more than one slice of bread, mate. Also, let's not forget that incidental field deaths are not an animal rights violation. And some peas, a couple of ducks for some rice. Actually, in order to kill a couple of ducks for some rice, based on our last calculations, you need to eat about 140 metric tons dry weight of New South Wales rice. So yeah, nah, not some rice, mate. A lot of rice. And that's so long as the deaths were actually due to crop protection and not sport hunters exploiting hunting ban loopholes. Producing one kilo of protein from wheat, a common crop in Australia, kills roughly 25 times more creatures than producing a kilogram of beef protein. Okay, so we already talked about this. Comparing a low protein product like wheat protein to a high protein product like beef is a sneaky way to inflate numbers. We really should be comparing calories like in this study, but we already know cows in Australia are finished with grain in feedlots and they also fed harvested grasses. And this 25 times more number is another archer claim. But of course, once his inflated mice plague numbers were properly adjusted for and harvested deaths were included, eating beef ends up killing way more animals. And let's not forget that according to the UN, 77% of global farmland is used for animal agriculture. So grazing land and growing crops to feed animals. So any kind of farm related killing, so trapping, poisoning, uh, farm protection, crop protection, crop deaths, animal rights violations, decapitation of animals, all of that stuff would be reduced if we all adopted a vegan diet. So we're talking about the actual killing of the animals and all the farm related death and harm and suffering and killing and trapping and hunting and protection and all those things reduced. According to Oxford University, we could reduce global farmland by 75% if we all adopted a vegan diet. So that would eliminate 75% of all those farm related deaths, including the trillions of marine animals that are slaughtered for humans as well, which I don't think Isaac factors into the equation. He probably thinks fish are vegetables. So there's the question, once again, whose lives are more important? Cows and pigs or everything else? Well, all sentient beings deserve moral consideration, but the context in which these deaths occur is important. Incidental deaths are not a rights violation. Accidents are not a rights violation. Genuine defense of property is not a rights violation, but enslaving, forcibly breeding, and decapitating animals for a sandwich is a clear animal rights violation. Also, if anyone actually cares about animals getting caught up in crop fields, you would boycott animal products, considering on average it takes about 10 times more calories from feed to produce the same amount of calories from animal products. My point is, if you're gonna to try to indoctrinate kids into the vegan lifestyle, at least be honest. We love animals. Well, at least these three. The other ones can fuck off. Did this absolute liar just say be honest after saying that he wants to not show people factory farm footage and said show them some idyllic hunting situation? The audacity of this guy to tell people to be honest and the irony of calling veganism indoctrination when children are literally force fed industry lies and minced up body parts for their whole life so that by the time they're adults, a watered down ad like this one with a small taste of reality puts them in a state of shock.
I wonder how many meat eaters complained about this ad, yet it's practically standard practice in the pork industry. Also, I'm sure even most children are smart enough to understand the moral difference between this and this. I'm sure most children can understand the difference between slavery and murder, or a car accident and self-defense. Both might incur a death, but one's a rights violation and one is not. You would actually kill less animals as a single person if you ate a carnivore diet than a vegan diet. Think about that. That's hilarious. Again, if you're going off of Archer's fake inflated mouse plague numbers, that might be true. As long as you don't factor in the crops that are harvested to feed the animals. But when you look at a standard carnivore diet, what is it? It's just meat, eggs, it's fish. How many fish are murdered? between one and three trillion every year. And yeah, you gotta factor in the feed that these animals eat. So Isaac goes on about vegans cherry picking and he picks up a Daily Mail article, reads some numbers and then says eating a carnivore diet kills less animals because that's what he wants to believe. That's what he wants to believe, but he doesn't care about the truth, this guy. On this graph, right, check out where plants are when it comes to deaths per calorie. So the idea that we, we, we start killing and eating more animals and that's going to kill less animals is absolutely nonsense. So I just wanna say one more important thing about this crop deaths thing. It's really much better to be agnostic as to whether cropland causes more death than the wildland that was there before it. Cause you gotta think in wildland, there's all this predation happening. There's birds uh, getting mice, there's, there's insects eating each other. There's a lot of death that's happening already in that land. Now it might even be that putting crops there is actually better for animals. Maybe that gives them a little more coverage from birds of prey. Maybe that plot of land has less death happening in it. And when the crops are harvested, these animals run away. So unless these carnivore or butterhead buffoons have comparative data to show cropland causes more death than the wild land before it, we can just dismiss it. But ladies and gentlemen, these people do not around. They love showing pigs in pain in some certain situations in factory farming. Pigs in pain in certain situations. You mean like the vast majority of the time? They love to try to get to your emotional centers of your brain to make you feel bad while you're sitting there eating dinner. Why would you even feel bad about it, mate? Emotional centers, why would you feel bad about it? I thought animals were here for us. They're not humans, they're here for us, they're food. Why do you think they matter morally enough for you to feel bad about them? Is it because you're getting a little glimmer of emotion underneath the layers and layers of indoctrination by the meat cult? The meat propaganda and indoctrination and cultural indoctrination has disconnected you from your empathy towards animals and vegans remind you of it and it pisses you off. That's why you make these stupid videos because you actually might feel a little bit bad about it. And vegans remind you of how you felt about animals as a kid. But they're not being honest. They're just not being honest. Yeah, but cherry picking false facts out of a biased Daily Mail anti-vegan article in order to justify the worst enslavement, torture, mass murder on earth is being honest, right mate? But that doesn't stop him. They're f assholes. It's almost like he's the king of irony and projection. Like literally, you're the most dishonest asshole on the internet, mate. Like when these kids that follow you go from about, what are they, probably about 10 years old now? When they grow up to be about 12, they'll see just how much of a dumbass you really are, mate. The fact of the matter is this, it's easy to give animals human-like traits to make them look like humans, to make them act like humans. And if you do that, it's harder to kill them. We're not giving animals human-like traits. They literally possess the trait sentience. Humans and animals possess this trait. It's what gives us subjective experience. It's what makes us matter morally because what happens to us matters to us. What happens to the animals matters to them. We share a consistent morally relevant trait, that's why we should extend fundamental rights to non-human animals. Otherwise, we have a massive contradiction. We're saying we're sentient, we deserve rights, I deserve not to be murdered and tortured, but they're also sentient, but because they look different to me, they don't deserve rights. In fact, I'm gonna decapitate them for a sandwich, but don't tell me about it, I don't wanna know about it. But Isaac wouldn't wanna recognize that they're sentient like us and their lives matter. Otherwise, it would be harder for him to eat their murdered flesh. But they're not humans, they're food, I'm sorry. But they're not humans, they're food, I'm sorry. But then when you re reacted to the most watered down factory farm footage I've ever seen, your exact words were, that's pretty f***ed up. But your memory must have lapsed again, cause now you're saying, who cares? Because they're not humans. It's like Isaac's one big walking, talking contradiction. Go and get yourself one of these anti-vegan social club t-shirts. Do it! And here he is monetizing his spreading of the hate of animals and the hate of vegans with his shitty t-shirts and selling them to his 10 year old fanboys. I don't see Isaac changing anytime soon. I don't think he'd have the courage to anyway. He's too far gone. He's too, he's too much of a people pleaser. He doesn't have an ounce of courage in him or a backbone in him to stand up for what he believes in. Even if he did think killing animals was wrong, he doesn't have the courage to do anything about it. But to any of the 10 year old fanboys that he has, look at how logically inconsistent this guy is. Why would you take any advice from someone like this? 
yeah, he's a comedian, but sometimes he tries to act like a political commentator or someone who has their own insights when really he's just a drone who recycles the same old anti-vegan garbage we've always heard. Think for yourself. Don't be like Isaac and live vegan.